Welcome. So what we have here is 5x divided by x squared minus x minus 6 minus 4 times x squared plus 4x plus 4. And this looks like a pretty good problem to be able to work with. Now remember, we're trying to find our least common multiple. And these denominators do not look anything like each other, where we're going to be able to find any common uh, factors with them. However, one thing that we've really tried, I've really tried to uh, emphasize in this is always look to simplify before you really get um, deep into the problem. So we notice if I was going to simplify this reaction expression, I see that I have a 5x, but I can't really simplify this any further. Um, however, I look at my denominator and say, all right, well, that is something I simplify. That's a trinomial. Is it possible for me to factor that? So let's go and take a look. So I have x squared minus x minus 6. And to factor that, remember, it's going to be what two values multiply to give me negative 6, but then add to give me negative 1. So it's really important that we're very strong with our factoring, te factoring techniques by here, that we can kind of do this in our head and kind of check it. So therefore, this it factored is going to be x minus 3 times x plus 2. All right, And you can check my work by, uh, applying, um, by applying FOIL. Then over here, I can't simplify the 4 in the numerator. But here, I see, oh, well, this kind of looks, I have my third term as a square number. So therefore, is the middle term double the square root of my square term, which, yeah, the square root of 4 is 2. And here, it's 2 times 2. So this is a perfect square trinomial, which means it's x plus 2 squared, or x plus 2 times x plus 2. So now, this is a little bit easier when looking to find my LCM, wouldn't you agree? Here, I can see, all right, my LCM, they both share an x plus 2. But here, I have an extra x plus 2. And here, I have an x minus 3. So when determining my LCM, I'm just going to write it as x plus 2 squared to kind of save space times x minus 3. So now, if I already have x plus 2, the only thing extra I need over here is an x minus 3 over x minus 3. And over here, I would need an extra x plus 2. All right. So now, when doing this, it's very important for us to apply our distributive property. We're multiplying this 5x times both terms. Now, previously, what I've done is I multiplied the positive 4 um, times both terms and then kept it in parentheses to multiply it by the negative. Well, in this case, let's just change this subtraction problem to an addition problem. So therefore, it's a positive negative 4x. Now, when I apply distributive property, I only need to, use my, I only need to get rid of my parentheses once. So here, I have 5x plus 10 minus 4x plus 12. And that's going to be all over my LCM, which is going to be x plus 2 squared times x minus 3. All right. So now we can simplify our numerator. That's 5x squared, sorry. So therefore, my simplified numerator is 5x squared, jeez, oh man, plus 10x. So plus 6x plus 12 divided by x plus 2 squared times x minus 3. All right. So now, before I move any further, I see, oh, well, I have a trinomial again. I need to determine, can I factor this again? So I'll use my box, and I'll use my AC method, 60 over 6. What two terms multiply to give me 60, but then only add to give me 6? And if I try to link about my numbers, the factors for 60, um, or even just the numbers that add to give me 6, this is not going to work as far as multiplying to give me 60, but add to give me 6. So therefore, my numerator is non-factorable. I cannot simplify it further. So now I have x plus 2 squared times x minus 3. If I just need to find the constraints or restrictions, I will set my denominator equal to 0. Now when I have a product equal 0, I can use the zero product property. I don't know why I'm using parentheses here. I don't need them. Here, I take the square root using the square root method. So I have x plus 2 equals 0, minus 2, minus 2, x equals negative 2. And over here, I have a positive 3, positive 3, x equals positive 3. So therefore, when x equals negative 2 or when x equals 3, my denominator equals 0. So therefore, my restriction states that x cannot equal negative 2 or positive 3. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you subtract unlike rational, or rational expressions with unlike denominators. Thanks.